Members of my blackjack teams have been arrested, had their chips confiscated by the casinos. I've been detained by police. Police officer stops me, grabs my, my arms behind my back, takes everything out of my pocket, grabs about $25,000, says, whoa, what the f is this? Where'd this come from? I was like, I'm a professional gambler. Where do you think it came from? Was any of this legal? Surprisingly, some of it wasn't and some of it was. Let me explain. I'm Colin from Blackjack Apprenticeship. I used to be a professional card counter. I ran teams of card counters that have beaten casinos for millions of dollars. And now I teach others how to count cards to beat the casino. If you're a card counter or interested in card counting, you need to know the law so that you can avoid getting yourself into a situation you shouldn't get into and to protect your rights when a casino or law enforcement violates your rights. About a year ago, my friend and Blackjack Apprenticeship member Sheriff AP was counting cards in a Colorado casino. A state gaming agent and a local police officer both showed up and this is what happened. I'm gonna go review the videos. If the videos show that you are committing a crime by cheating or counting cards, you will have a warrant for your arrest. Counting cards is, it is a illegal. warrant for my arrest. It is a form of fraudulent activity in the state of Colorado. You're saying I could okay. be arrested for counting you can. cards. Is this true? Can you be arrested for card counting? Here's what Nevada-based lawyer and player advocate Bob Session had to say when I asked him this question. You can't put handcuffs on people for card counting and you can't hold them and that is criminal false imprisonment. No, you can't be arrested for counting cards because all you're doing as a card counter is using your brain and thank God that is still legal. The sad reality though is that plenty of people, including some casino employees and law enforcement, don't know the law around card counting. The casino had taken this guy into custody and held him for two hours for card counting. They weren't even denying it. The police said, we're not gonna take that report. I said, what do you mean you're not gonna take it? That's your job. And they go, your client just admitted he was card counting. I said, yeah, they go, that's illegal. If you're ever detained by a casino for card counting or any other legal activity, make sure that you contact a lawyer immediately. Also, be sure to record the time of day that it happened so that the surveillance video footage can be saved. Casinos can't arrest you for card counting, but can't they just refuse to cash you out or even confiscate your chips? So you guys refuse to cash me out? Did you hear about that? They wouldn't let me cash my chips out. You wouldn't let them, ca you wouldn't let them cash his chips out? They're holding the chips. They haven't paid for the chips. The guy went to turn them in. And now they go, thank you, Mr. Card Counter. Now get out of our casino. The Game and Control Board, if you get a good investigator, will look at the situation and go, he was card counting and you're not paying him? You're at risk here, Mr. Casino, mm -hmm. because you are required to promptly pay those chips and they better pay the damn chips because anything less is theft. If it's a state-run casino, then casinos can't legally refuse to cash you out for being a card counter. But what has become rampant at casinos is for them to say it's our policy to not cash anyone out without showing us ID. Why are they doing this? It's the casino's workaround to still get your name and identification so that they can share it in their database with other casinos to try to stop Advantage players. It's become a huge pain for card counters as we want to do everything in our power to stay out of these casino black books of winning players. Here's an example of my friend Stephen Bridges dealing with this exact issue. No. I can't cash you out. Why not? Because I need your player's card or your ID. It's not needed. Huh? Why? It's not protocol. Is it legal for a casino to say their policy is to not cash you out without ID? Here's lawyer Bobner session on this. Truth be told, there is absolutely no law anywhere that says you have to show ID for anything under $10,000 and even for amounts over $10,000, that's debatable. Mm -hmm. I have chips. The law says promptly redeem. It doesn't say show ID anywhere. Above $10,000, Casinos do have a legal responsibility to fill out some federal paperwork that I recommend complying with. But below $10,000, casinos can't just make up their policy and say that it supersedes the law. And the law is clear. They have to cash you out whether you provide ID or not. But what if they say that they need to verify that the chips truly belong to you? When we were running a million dollar card counting team, there was a player on our team that had some $5,000 chips from a session, but he was running late for a flight. So he decided to give those chips to another player and said, hey, you can use these at the casino, I gotta go. 
When that new player went to the casino and tried to buy in with the $5,000 chips, the casino said, we can't prove that these chips belong to you, so we're going to keep them until the rightful owner proves that they belong to him. Was that legal of the casino to do? They have no right to take those chips. Well, they did. Well, why did they? They said, you can't prove that they're yours. Okay, why do they have a right to take the chips? What's the law that says that they can take those chips? There's not one. Yeah. And who has a right to possession of the chips? The holder. The law says the casino has the burden of knowing or should have knowing that you didn't get them there. We took it to the Supreme Court of Nevada and the Supreme Court of Nevada said patron means patron, pay the man. If a state-run casino can't arrest you for car counting and they can't just confiscate your money, can't they just ban you? I've been told by roughly 100 casinos that I can no longer play blackjack at their casino, and dozens of times I've been told that I'd be arrested if I came back on their property. What's the law here? Well, it's tricky. Different states have different laws when it comes to refusing service to card counters. States like New Jersey, Louisiana, and Missouri are not allowed to ban you for counting cards. However, they find other tricky ways to try to limit you. But the law clearly states that they have to let skilled players play. In other states, casinos have a right to refuse service to whoever they want. It's kind of like grocery stores who have a no shirt, no shoes, no service sign on the door. But instead, it's a, you want to use your brain here? No blackjack for you. Unfortunately, that's the law. So for us card counters, if they say we can't play, we can't play and it's off to the next casino. But can they arrest you if you come back? For some casinos, saying no blackjack isn't enough. They wanna get punitive here and they'll read you a thing called the Trespass Act, which says we have a right to arrest you for trespassing if you come back on our property. If a casino reads you the Trespass Act, this official sounding document off of a paper, I personally wouldn't push it with that casino. However, I do have a few friends that have been arrested for trespassing by coming back to a casino that previously read them the Trespass Act. I've represented eight people who've been charged with trespassing through trial. Now, in every one of those instances, I had a defense. I have never seen somebody convicted who takes a trespass charge to trial. So far, everything I've shared pertains to state-run casinos, but what about tribal casinos? Of the roughly $4 million my blackjack teams have taken from casinos, about half of that is from tribal casinos in the US. Me and my teammates have been detained in back rooms of tribal casinos. Once I was even detained by local police because a tribal casino told him that I was doing something illegal. After we had both gotten like backed off and they escorted us to cashiers and everything, he, he made me put my arms behind my back and he like searched me and took everything out of my pocket. But all the casino really wanted from that local cop was to get my ID so that they could put me in their black book. Was it legal for them to detain me? Well, this is where it gets tricky. We called local police as soon as we got off tribal land and he met us there. And his first question is, did this happen on tribal land? To which we said, yes, it was in the casino right there. The local police officer said, we have no jurisdiction on tribal land. And he was right, tribal land is sovereign, which means they can operate based off of their own laws tribal police, and tribal gaming agents. Be aware of this fact. If a tribal casino says they're not gonna cash out your chips, you can talk to a tribal gaming agent or tribal police, but just be aware, they don't have to do anything if they don't want to. If it were me, if they said they're not gonna cash me out, I would just get out of the casino and get someone else to cash out the chips at another time. As intimidating as it can sound that we don't have the same rights on tribal land, just be aware, these stories I shared are the most extreme stories from tens of thousands of hours and millions of dollars won at tribal casinos. As far as me and my teammates, we always got our money and we never got roughed up by the casino. The cat and mouse game between casinos and card counters has been around for 60 years, but the law is overwhelmingly on our side. It is legal to use our brains. But what exactly is card counting? How does it work? And how have my friends and I used it to take millions of dollars out of casinos? I'm going to answer that in this video.